A customer reached out to me requesting a kitchen island table built entirely of hard maple. Below you can see some images that I used as inspiration for this build. And the first step here is to choose the best two of these slabs to cut in half and use three of the pieces to build the tabletop. And looking at these boards, this one has a couple knots in it. So we're gonna eliminate this one because we want our overall dimension to be 48 inches long and kind of overlaps both of those knots. We're gonna take both of our halves from these boards and cut both of them down the middle and choose the best three of those. Start cutting our tabletop. While the knots can look pretty in legs and in you know lower shelves, I decided to go against it for the tabletop just because you don't want anything getting stuck in there, whether it be you know setting a banana down or setting a cup of oat milk down. I just didn't want to go that path for the tabletop. And sure, I could have colored it with resin, but I did not know how that would look here and I didn't want to take the risk. After cutting the hard maple to just a little bit longer than the 48 inches I desired for the tabletop, I took it over to the jointer and I used one of the flat surfaces on the back there to true up one of the sides. And after that's done, just right back to the planer and plane it down so it's nice and smooth on both the upper and lower faces. With both of the faces now playing to one another, I can take the board over to my bandsaw and cut these into little strips. Each of these strips will be the same size, and that way after we glue them up, they'll be in the same plane. Here, I'm running them through the planer one final time, and this just makes sure that they are all the same thickness. Once that's done, right over to the clamping station, put on some of this Tight Bond 3, which is more food grade and a little bit stronger of a joint. And I'll clamp each of these up, uh, kind of reversing uh, upper and lower bar clamps. Now, because the tabletop is so large, it'll be roughly 48 by 24 inches when it's done. That 24 inch dimension is too large for my planer. My planer can only manage 13 inches width. So I'll have to make the tabletop in two sections and then glue them together at the end. And here you're seeing me glue up that second half. With both halves of the tabletop now dried up after the initial glue up, I can run each of them through the planer and then I'll carefully make sure that they are both the same thickness before I glue these together. With both pieces laying flat on my workbench, I'm going to push them together and line them up. And I'll make some marks every six to eight inches or so. And these marks will indicate where I'll be using my biscuit joiner uh, to drill out some holes or gouge some holes out. And these holes will make it so that both of the faces will line up and it'll be a flat surface. Now it's time for the second glue up of this project. I'll take both of the halves over to my bar clamps. I'll set one facing straight up and put a stream of glue down and then insert all of the biscuits into the slots that I just drilled out. I'll also put some glue onto each of these biscuits, uh, making sure to get good surface connectivity between both of the halves. Once that's done, I can lower that second half to the other one, making sure that my marks are lined up on each piece and put on some bar clamps. Now you might notice here I have some tape on the bar clamps. This will discourage any of the glue from getting stuck to the bar clamps. I have noticed in past projects, for whatever reason, these galvanized bar clamps that I have, they leave a pretty bad black mark onto lighter woods in particular. And sometimes you have to stand pretty deep to remove it. This here is a piece of 12 quarter hard maple. So it's about three inches thick. So I'm going to try to cut this to use this uh, to the most efficient way possible uh, because this is a rather pricey piece of wood here. I believe this one cost uh, just over $10 a board foot, you know, while everything else is anywhere from uh, 5 to $7 a board foot. 
I'm aiming for the final height of this table to be 36 inches tall. So I'll cross cut both of these pieces at 37 inches just for a little bit of wiggle room in case I need it down the road. You can see here I'm using a few sticks on either end of the cut. Uh, this kind of relieves any pressure or, or forces that would be created uh, pinching the blade so that when it finally frees up when you're done with your cut, the wood just falls away to either side. Now repeating the same process for milling up the slumber on the legs. Uh, here I'll just take it over to my jointer, get a clean edge, go over to the bandsaw, uh, and then rip down each of the pieces to make sure they're all the same size, go over to the planer, uh, plane up you know, both the top and the bottom faces, and then finally do the initial cut on the miter saw, uh, which again this is going to be long and we'll come back and true it up when the project is nearing completion. The next step is to cut a mitered end onto each of the leg tops. And this is where I'll be putting in a few inserts to lock in the legs to the rest of the cabinetry or to the rest of the table. Using a stop lock, this helps me create a similar mitered cut. And you can see here, uh, lining up the piece of wood that'll be in the top of the frame. And it fits. The final pieces that I'll be cutting out are gonna be out of this eight quarter maple and they'll create the slats for the lower shelving units beneath the tabletop, as well as all of the framing around the tabletop. I just wanted to showcase another method to creating a flat surface on the edge. Instead of using a joiner, you can use a track saw and clamp everything down to the edge of a table and run that down. Now this will not create a surface that is quite as flat as a joiner, but for our purposes, this will be more than adequate since I'll just be ripping this down on the bandsaw. Now with all the pieces a little bit smaller and more manageable, we can take them over to the joiner, uh, get that flat edge that we desire, and then run it through the planer uh, to make sure that both the opposing sides are playing with each other. With the pieces of our framed milled appropriately to the correct dimensions, we can cut them down to rough lengths on the miter saw and then go over to the table saw and cut some mitered edges there. Now, these pieces are going to be what joins the legs to the rest of the frame. And so there'll be some holes drilled in it and you'll see that coming up here in just a minute. Now because there's four legs, there's going to be four of these mitered pieces here to connect the legs and with them cut to their final dimensions, you can take it over to the belt sander and here I believe I'm using 320 grit sandpaper uh, just to give a nice smooth surface. For this project, rather than trying to find a bolt that would match up with all of my inserts that I put into the legs, I decided to cut out a threaded rod. The size that I'm using here is 3 8 and I decided to build a little jig to make sure that I cut each piece to the desired length. Now one thing to remember when you're cutting out on a jig like this is to secure your saws all in my case uh, appropriately. I did not and I almost had a uh, little mishap. I ended up cutting 12 pieces in total here, uh, two for each of the legs, which equals eight, and then two for each side of the table, and you'll see how I join that coming up here shortly. The final step for each of these threaded rod pieces is to deburr them over on the belt sander, and I'm just using 80 grit sandpaper here and putting a little bevel on each of the ends. Now on to cutting the slats for each of the shelves for this project. I'm going to rip each of them down on my bandsaw and then take them over to my planer and uh, make them all the exact same height just as before. So kind of the same process for everything here. You know, it's all milling down by, you know, ripping things down to size, joining them, planing them, making sure everything is nice and smooth and the same matching dimension where applicable. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part, uh, sanding. So I sand each and every one of these pieces a few times. Start with 120 grit, 
I'll work my way up to 220 grit. So it's a long laborious process here. So I'm gonna spare a lot of footage and I'll drop my sander in retaliation. For the frame assembly, I'm going to set everything down on the top of my workbench using a framing square and some painter's tape. I'm going to tape everything so that it is as close as possible to the actual fit. Uh, this kind of locks everything down. And you'll see in the upper left hand corner, uh, this is where I drilled out holes in each of the upper portions of the legs for the inserts. Unfortunately, the camera was out of focus, so uh, not good quality there. Once everything is taped up, I make sure again it's all squared on the tabletop. Then I can drill out each of the holes that will secure these mitered pieces to the rest of the frame members. And you'll notice a blue piece of tape on the drill from time to time here, and that's just indicating how far deep I want to go so that I don't pop out the other side. Uh, the worst thing you could do is to drill straight through and then you have a nice hole that you have to fill with a dowel and it sticks out like a sore thumb. With the holes all drilled, you can go over everything with a chamfering bit. And this will just allow the head of the screw to sit more flush with the rest of the piece, which also provides a more distributed area for the force to close the joint. Now this might be more of a case of do as I say and not as I do, but I use an impact gun here, or impact driver. I do recommend using a regular drill, um, but the holes that I drilled were just a little bit too tight. so. In good practice, I probably should have widened these holes out a little bit more and just use a regular drill. In each of these mitered pieces, we're going to drill a few holes that are oversized. And this will allow for the threaded rod for each of the legs to slide through and uh, we can lock that in place with a few washers and then some nuts. Once all of the legs are secure, uh, this is now the official first test fit. I want to flip the table over at this point and measure everything out. Uh, the goal here is to see if there are any uh, widths or, or lengths that are kind of off, um, you know, any wobble that I can adjust right now uh, before I square everything up and, and cut everything to the final length. So with that, everything looks good to me. I can take everything apart once again and then uh, begin the whole process of cutting the legs down to their final dimension and then sanding everything appropriately. Now over on the miter saw, I will set up a stop block and uh, screw that into my workbench. And I can begin by cutting the slats to their final dimension as well as the legs and any other parts of the frame uh, that need to be uh, dimensioned appropriately. So you can see here, this is the leg and there's a decent chunk that I need to take off, um, which is good. You know, it's, it's better to have too much to cut off than having to add something. With all pieces now cut to their final dimension, we can go over to the belt sander and begin smoothing everything up. I began here with 320 grit sandpaper, but I realized it was not aggressive enough, so I decided to swap that out for some 120 grit. And uh, this got me just what I needed, but you gotta be careful when you go to those lower grit sandpapers. It'll really, you know, hog out your material quickly. So, uh, quick passes is the name of the game. And uh, yeah, you can see all the pieces that I had to sand down, and it's a little bit hot in my shop. This was uh, built down in Houston in the summertime, so. Uh, not an ideal <laughs> time or place to be building in a hot shop. I lined everything up with the top frame for the tabletop as well as the leg and I held it in place as I drilled out a hole and I also chamfered it down to allow for the screw to sink just beneath it. Now this is going to be the bottom of the shelf so you will not see these holes anyways but just wanted to make it right. Now this whole process took quite a bit of time so I'm going to speed things up just a bit. So each of these slats had to be spaced out from one another. So I just used the off cuts from these slats as spacers in between them, as well as an off cut length that'll indicate how far each of the slats will go from the brackets used to drill and secure them from beneath. Now after drilling and screwing all 30 screws in each shelf, 
and there's two shelves, so a total of 60 times. You can finally remove all of those little strips and spacers that I used, flip everything over, uh, inspect it, and it is smooth and flat, just like we want it. And then on to the final test fit. This is just to make sure that everything fits together appropriately after all the final cuts have been made and everything's been sanded down. Once we finish this step, we can move on to coating everything with a protective layer, but definitely need to make sure that it fits together first. So laying down the shelves, I secure a few of these clamps and this will help hold the shelves. But unfortunately, I can't lift the shelf with a couple of those clamps in. So I have to remove them and then slide the clamps in. And then once this lower shelf is at the appropriate height and I'm satisfied with the overall aesthetic, I can begin the process of drilling and screwing these shelving brackets into place. Now this will be the same process that we've been doing. It's drilling to a depth that is predetermined on the drill, chamfering out the hole to allow for more of a flush fit with the screw. And this time I'm just going to use a normal drill and drive these screws in. Bringing out the track saw again, we can hook it to the tabletop and we can cut this to the final dimension. I believe that the exact final size that I went to was 49 by 25. So just a little bit oversized from what the customer originally ordered, but it's bigger and she's happy. So it's a win-win. After making sure that all sides are squared up, you can take out the old palm sander once again went from 60 to 80 to 220, up to 320 for this. So tons of sanding, making sure that everything is nice and smooth and flat. I decided to take apart some of the mitered areas in the frame and add a little bit of glue. And this will secure things just a little bit more. And then the final step for this upper portion of the frame is to add these two blocks. And these two blocks will be what locks the tabletop into it. So a little bit complicated to explain uh, but you'll just have to watch the video to see. So I glued these two blocks to the frame and then I also drove in a few screws. And with those two tabletop securing blocks in place, everything is pretty much done. The only holes that are remaining now are going to be for the holes that lock in the tabletop through those two blocks. And again, you'll see what I mean in a second. So now I can apply a few coats of varnish. I applied a total of three sanding in between and this whole process took a couple days, so sparing you some time and speeding things up quite considerably. With the protective coat now dried to the touch, we can start the reassembly process. So here I'm just reassembling the shelves, putting all the slats into place, and I'll take all of the pieces indoors and assemble the entire assembly as one in my living room. Now I got these cats with the goal of having them help me around the shop and doing a few things around the house, but so far all they've been good for is jumping on my back or sleeping. So not a good investment, but they sure are cute though. Here I have the tabletop marked out and clamped down to exactly the location where I'd like it to sit. So I'll drill a hole through those blocks that I told you about earlier. And through this hole, I'm going to set a dowel. And this dowel will be glued into the blocks and it'll penetrate into the tabletop, uh, but it will not be secure there. It'll be secure on these locations, which are going to be a wide hole uh, for the threaded rod. And this wide hole will allow for movement in the threaded rod just for expansion and contraction of the wood, you know, with humidity changes over the year. As mentioned, here is the dowel and I chamfered the edge just for allow for a better fit into the tabletop. And then here is the bottom side of the tabletop and I'm using a little guide or, you know, a little jig for securing those inserts into the tabletop. And once those are completely penetrated and, and flush with the tabletop, I can break the fitting between each of those nuts and repeat this process four times. You'll notice that I marked out A and B on each side of this tabletop. 
and this indicates which side it's supposed to go onto the frame. Now each side is going to be a little bit different, so if you were to mix them up, the table might not be perfectly square with the frame. So good idea to mark things out. Here's a shot of how everything looks underneath with that dowel in the center and the two threaded rods on either side with washers and nuts and the oversized holes that will allow for movement. After giving this the Matthias Wandel jump test, everything seems secure enough. So I'm gonna put on some of these furniture pads, which will stick to the bottom and will allow the piece to slide around and not damage the floor. Here's a few shots of everything in its final home. Thank you guys for watching with me to the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and don't forget to follow me over on the John Barnes Instagram page. Have a great day.